Thank you for joining me today. As I mentioned on my Facebook and to my normal chat group, we plan to start talking again about Shalom. Shalom is a Hebrew word that means peace, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken, completeness, prosperity. If you look into the word, I will bring it up on the screen directly here. This word is written from backward to front. So you see the W looking thing. It's the first letter and so on. All right. So the Shin and the Lamed. So the Shin is the W looking thing. The Lamed is the next thing. The Vab and the Mem is the circle looking thing. Okay. The first thing is teeth, shepherd. And the second thing is a shepherd's staff. The third thing is a nail hook, and the fourth thing is waters. The word means to destroy authority connected with chaos confusion. The translations that I find in the Blue Letter Bible are completeness, soundness, welfare, peace, completeness and number, safety, soundness and body, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, quiet, tranquility, contentment, peace, friendship, of human relationships with God, especially in covenant relationship. Peace from war, peace is objective. Now, if we look into the Greek word for peace, it's a reine, and it's a state of national tranquility, exemption from rage and havoc of fear, peace between individuals, harmony, concord, concord, security, safety, prosperity, felicity, because peace and harmony make and keep things safe and prosperous. Of the Messiah's peace, the way that leads to peace, salvation, of Christianity, the tranquil state of the soul, assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and content with its early lot of whatsoever sort that is, the blessed state of devout men after death. So let's go back up here and look at this. My main point today is to talk about the gospel of peace, the prince of peace, and the shoes of peace. I will use what I can of the paper that I wrote, but I want you to see this. So the very beginning of time, we have God creating the heavens and the earth, and he said that it was good. And then God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, and he made it perfect for them. And Adam and Eve made a decision to go against God's word. And God had promised Adam that if he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he would die. Now he didn't physically die immediately. He lived about a thousand years, 900 and something years. But he spiritually died, and he did not have the relationship with God that he had initially had. And as time went on, the animals and everything in, on earth, remember God said in Genesis that you're going to have to toil now for your food. I have to kick you out of the garden because you can't be around the tree of life anymore because we can't have you living forever and being separated from God. So therefore, God kicked Adam out of the garden, and he put an angel there to protect the tree of life. And then from then on, Adam had to toil, and the ground was going to be not happy with him. He had to work for everything he did after that. Before the garden, it had the trees, everything he needed, and he had a relationship with God, and he could just hang out with God in the evening and talk to him about whatever during the day. But what happened when Adam sinned against God he lost everything. And in the garden, God promised Eve that, she, that he, in um, Genesis 3, God promised Eve that her seed would bring forth the redemption and he would bring it back to completion again. God promised her. He promised, he, he had that plan before the, in, before the foundation of the world. This is not something, oh no, I got to fix it. No, God already knew what he was going to do because God knew the end from the beginning. God is outside of time and he knows what's going to happen. So that's what that's going to be. So when we're talking about peace and shalom and wholeness, we're talking about bringing it all back. So Jesus is the Prince of Peace in Isaiah 9, 6. The Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay. So the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is going to bring it back to wholeness. If you look in the New Testament, what he does for people. 
he he brought the lady that had the issue of blood. He brought her back to wholeness. Remember, your faith will make you whole. Your faith will bring shalom. When Jesus was talking to the wind, he said, shalom. He said, peace be still. Shalom. Chaos end. Peace come. Right? So that's how Jesus was the Prince of Peace. If you look in Acts, Jesus went about doing good, destroying all the works of the devil, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. That's the first, those are first John and Acts. The point is, Jesus went about showing us the Father. In John 14, he says, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because it's the heart of the Father to bring wholeness to his people. It's the heart of the Father to make to bring us all wholeness. And that's the whole point of Jesus being the Prince of Peace. The next little subject I would like to mention, I'm just going to read one scripture reference to you. Remember I said at the beginning, we're talking about the Prince of Peace. We're going to go to the God of Peace next because I just want to read. Re I'm sure there's one more reference than this, but this is the one I saw. And this one is about is Paul writing to the Romans and he's warning them about things going on with them. So I'll read that section to you and then I'll read the ending. I appeal to you, brothers, do, do watch to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ with their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise as what is good and innocent as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. So the God of peace, the, the God who's going to bring wholeness, who's going to destroy chaos, is going to crush Satan underneath your feet. We're going to remember that Shalom is wholeness. Shalom is the authority to destroy chaos. And Jesus came as the Prince of Peace, as a representative of the God of Peace, to bring wholeness and destroy chaos. Next, we're going to talk about the peace that Jesus gives, all right? We're going to pull up this document here. I'm going to read it to you. Give me a second on that. Share screen. Now we're going to start up here at 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live. You will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Now, we've been talking a few minutes now about shalom, wholeness. And it's not the peace that the world gives. It's the peace that comes from the Prince of Peace, the God of Peace. It's wholeness. It's completeness. It's absence of chaos. It's a village to destroy the works of the devil. And if you read up here in John, in John 14, 12, I see if I can get up here. Let's see. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I'm going to the father. What you ask in my name, this will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now let's look at this James reference concerning the wisdom of God. James 3.17, Aramaic and plain English. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, filled with peace, that's shalom, meek and attentive, filled with love and good fruit, without division, and does not show partiality. But the fruit of righteousness are sown in peace for those who make peace, sown in shalom, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken, absence of chaos. Now the Passion Translation but the wisdom from above is always pure, filled with peace, considerate, and teachable. 
It is filled with love and never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. And it always bears the beautiful harvest of righteousness. Good seeds of wisdom's fruit will be planted with peaceful acts by those who cherish making peace. So if you recall Solomon, when God asked him what he wanted, he asked for wisdom. And if you know, remember Solomon was the richest man. And he it was just amazing what he had. But he was able, because of the wisdom of God that he had, to judge between the people of Israel. And because of that, we have that in us too, because we have the spirit of God in us. And they, God has put the wisdom from above that we are the peacemakers. We do have within us to change the atmosphere around us, to change the world around us, to change people's lives around us, because we have the spirit of God on the inside of us. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is within us. And we have that to do the will of God. Now, a minute ago, I told you the Holy Spirit on the inside of us has the answer to all life's problems. That is found in 1 John 2.20. Next thing I want to mention is James 1. is very interesting. It defines shalom at the end of the verse. Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Let that patience have its perfect work, that you may become perfect, complete, lacking nothing. And that is the definition of shalom perfect complete lacking nothing okay now we're going to talk a little bit about our mind all right in romans chapter 8 to be carnally minded is death to be spiritually minded is life and peace that's romans 8 6 think about that life and peace the the, the more i read the more i start studying in peace i see i just keep running into things so this is something that I thought the very interesting is so to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's Romans 8 6. So look at Proverbs 3 1 and 2. And this is going to go along with the mind again, okay? My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life. And there's again peace that will add to you. So if you're keeping the commandments of God, it's going to make you have shalom. It's going to make you whole in every situation of your life. And if you look at Psalms 1, blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does prospers. Now, the point of that is he's focusing on the Lord. He's focusing on the word of God, and he's going to make his way prosper because he's keeping his mind on the word. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service of worship. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may produce the perfect will of God. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, so that's another one. You're going to come. You're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We were talking about Psalms one. We're talking about keeping the teaching of Proverbs. The next one is Isaiah twenty six three. He will keep it perfect peace. The mind stayed on thee because he trusts thee. We've been talking about this for a while. Mind renewal. But as we see in these passages, if we focus on the word of God and what God teaches, we will have life and peace. Remember Mr. Spock, he did that hand signal. Peace and long life. The response was live long and prosper. Leonard Neboy was Jewish and he saw that done at a synagogue. And that's why he decided to share that with us. Now, let's talk about this. This is something I think is really important. Let's look at 3 John 2. Our beloved, I pray for you that you will prosper in all things and be well as your soul prospers. Now, in the American Standard Version, beloved, I pray that in all things thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. I looked up that word in the Greek, and it's safe, sound, whole, well, and good health, G5198. Hygiano. Sounds like the word hygiene to me. So then we're going to look at 
Isaiah 61 and Luke 4, 18 and 19. They're basically the saying the same thing. Jesus took Luke 4, 18 and 19 from Isaiah 61. So in Luke, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, the acceptable year of the Lord is when everything is restored. It's the 50th year, and if you're slaved, you get to be go back home and be yourself again. If there's land that you sold away, the land is restored. Everything is restored back to wholeness, and that's what Jesus is declaring, that he came here to restore people to wholeness. Now, I can look up Isaiah 61. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Now, Jesus said that, and now he said that about himself. He stood up in the temple and he read Isaiah 61, and he said, this is who I am today. Today, this has been fulfilled in your ears. So Jesus came to do this. He came to restore that which was lost. He came to bring wholeness. All right. Now let's go down here. Let's read Isaiah 53, 4 and 6 to see if I can find that. So let's just read Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed, we were made whole. Now in Peter, 1 Peter 2, 24, he who his own self bare our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. And by his stripes we were healed. The point of that, y'all, is Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, and he came to make things whole. He came to see us prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. This may be a flag for some people, but this is a prosperity gospel. We don't focus on money, but we focus on God, and God came to put all things to completion, all things to wholeness. There is not supposed to be lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we just read Psalms 1. If you're meditating on the law of the Lord, if you're seeking God first, he's going to take care of you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. There is no lack here. There's no provision for lack here. So I declare shalom peace over everyone listening to my voice right now in Jesus' name. I declare wholeness. What is it? Live long and prosper. Peace and a long life. Thank you for listening to me today. I enjoyed it. God bless you all.